In the bottom left corner of Ice and Chrome. First stop for the foremost Bear Slaws here in week four of the Validity Team League. It's Mudflap. And in the top right, as the Teal Terran representing Risen Community, it's Carpe Noctum. Also known as Arcane Spoon, I'll be uh, alternating those names throughout the game. As uh, Arcane Spoon is what he's known as throughout most of the community. Arcane's. <clears throat> showing himself to be a force among the Risen Platinums when he really sets his mind to it. Uh, I know he preps for these matches, takes them really seriously. Mudflap, I think, is from the Forma Spearslaw's alliance with the Gosu crew, is my understanding. Um, so, a welcome Mudflap to the FXB. Today's captains are myself for Risen Community and Duddles. For the form of spare slots. Always like to shout out the administration because I know how much work it is rallying the players every week uh, and scheduling and making sure things happen. So Mudflap gets his scout, sees the barracks, and is confident. You know, he's not facing a proxy Rex. Arcane Spoon doing likewise, seeing the first gate, knows he's not getting max packs. And he's going to get off the gas steel. This is huge. See, uh, so normally in the matchup, if the opponent's SCV is in your main... Oh my god, it even s swipes to the other side to add some HP onto this refinery. You want to hold position a probe next to the gas so that uh, one hex is blocked off of the gas geyser. And that will prevent your opponent from dropping uh, this very annoying refinery block. I guess a simulator in the case of the Protoss. Now, a little bit about how I cast these matches. Uh, if you're not a member of either team and you're just coming for enjoyment, you're probably used to me uh, having a more analytical style and, um, you know, really hopping into the play-by-play. -play. When I cast VTL, I like to drop little pieces of advice in case our players watch the VODs. Our first two players from each team, uh, assuming there's no forfeits, are going to be Platinum players, our tertiary players are going to be Diamond 2 or 3, and our aces for each team will be Diamond 1. So, always like to um, give them helpful commentary on their gameplay. Duddle saying gorgeous logo. Thanks a lot, man. Um, it's, uh, if you mean like the VTL Season 8 logo, that's also courtesy of Baked Potato. It was a team effort. Um, I think it really turned out nicely. Double Tech Lab from Arcane Spoons means Marauder production and we're going to see Stim as well as Marauder Slow started up. Just a Marine trickling out at a time, no refinery on the barracks. So that, uh, although he could afford this, I was going to say he cut it for Marauder production, but he totally can afford a refinery um, as well to just get out one extra Marine at a time. So you're going to see the minerals bank up somewhat. Maybe he wants to take a third, who knows? Because what I'm not seeing here from Arcane Spoon is a Widow Mine drop. Now, what does that mean for us? We see three barracks, and we see no starport, no factory. Well, that means Arcane's Boon is going to make a two base play. He has no other options. He's not going to have a factory for the anchors. He needs to hold a third. Uh, it, oh my god, he's going for a third. Oh, okay. So here's where we're going to start the commentary on the players. This should not be happening. 
this you don't do this like uh you need to be hitting with some of your scvs as well as your bio at this point in the game you probably should have a start point port as well mudflap's gonna hit with these two adepts and arcanes is gonna have to race home because he just has nothing to defend these guys they're gonna have to pull to the main if he doesn't respond the adepts are gonna start tickling the reactor and he's he's going into production behind this as well oh my god he catches the stalkers out on the map uh mudflap will save three of them and pull them back but there's no shield batteries here to defend for mudflap he needs shield batteries arcane's boon might be able to pull this off stim is finishing stim is done but he's not procking it just yet hit the t-button arcane's boon he's stutter stepping back the probes have begun to fall Mudflap did not send in the adepts yet, but you can see them moving on the mineral or er, on the mini map. Arcanes uh, has one marauder in a bunker, but these guys are going to be able to get in behind the mineral line, maybe even up some of the worker damage. Nine probes lost for Mudflap so far. Arcane Spoon not pressing his advantage. That's going to allow Mudflap to warp in reinforcements. One stalker heavily injured, another goes down. Looks like three stalkers will be traded out before Mudflap finally holds, but he shouldn't be pulling the probes to fight two marauders. Oh no. Another three probes do fall. The rest are softened up. However, Arcane's Boon loses eight SCVs in the background. That's a survivor SCV right there. Oh my god, it survives another round. It keeps poking out of this gas, but finally dies. Supply depots are down, so these guys can't enter the main. Uh Mudflap lost two more probes than Arcane's Boon lost SCVs. However, the worker counts even. Um, ish, you'd expect the Protoss to be ahead six workers, and Arcane's Boon got out this third base. So, uh, assuming he can hold it, he might be able to pull back from this, but this game has gone into weird places. Normally, if you open three barracks, you're, you're kind of all in. Like, you kind of have to do damage to the Protoss, uh, and you don't take a third. You want to keep committing to it as much as possible, pull a lot of your SCVs to fight. But we didn't see that from Arcane's Boon. We saw the three racks, we saw the attack, but he tried to expand and up his production. You cannot do both. You need to do the damage, then throw down your third CC in the main or something. Um, however, Mudflap able to get those two adepts in, even out the damage despite uh, Arcane's Boon trying to have his cake and eat it too. And I think he's pretty okay going into the mid game here. He's now pulled eight workers ahead of Arcanes. Arcanes had a lot of SCVs not mining for a little while as well. Um, so that hurt him economically in the long run. He's trying to get the repair on the CC and should move that back down to the low ground and start triple pumping SCVs to get caught up. But I think it's been long enough to determine that Mudflap is in the lead. Arcanes moving Battle Mech out onto the field. The Ursidon narrowly avoiding getting run over. Like, whoa! You see that? It brushed up against my fur. Wow. What a parade. I don't think Arcane's composition um, is going to work out the best. The Hellions move really far up front. Two Stalkers move to deal with this. They get one probe kill. The Cyclone should move in, but there's no Hellions to shield for them. The Cyclones go into the Mineral Line. Uh, okay, they're gonna get a lock on on the Nexus. This feels like 2014 gameplay. The Shield Battery isn't healing the Nexus. You need to manually target it to make it heal a building. So, uh, Arcanes loses all his Cyclones, but kills the Nexus. And in the back, Mudflap hits with like four Zealots and kills 20 SCPs. So, Arcane's Boon, 26 workers, Mudflap, 48 workers. This is almost an unclosable gulf between the two economies. Tech Lab is going to burn down in a couple seconds. Um, however, I don't think 
Arcanes is going to tap out because he did get the kill on that Nexus, and uh, he is technically a base ahead. Extended Thermal Lance finishing up for the Protoss, so he's going to have a pretty powerful army. Now these Colossi aren't going to trade the best against Cyclones. Uh, if the Cyclones can get a proper lock on, now that is hard to do. I don't like the Mass Hellions coming out from Arcane's Boon, because this is what's going to happen with them. But six Hellions gone for free, not a shot was fired. Several Siege Tanks to defend the Natural, and then the main overlooking the Mineral Line, but... There's nothing positioned here to save the third or the fresh fourth. The third's gonna evacuate, but Arcanes has not cancelled the fourth base. That's okay, because Mudflop is not scouting here. He doesn't know what he's up against. Not a single zealot has been split off, and he is kinda done kirking it as he waits for the next Colossus. This is allowing Arcane Spoon to get up missile turrets. Uh, in the main, which could limit Warp Prism play if Mudflap tries to go for a charge lot warp in. Arcanes finally cancels the fourth. That's going to free up some cash. Two more siege tanks about to pop. The charge lots are almost down, but the stalkers are walking in. They're, they need to blink on the tanks. Okay, they finally do. Uh, they took a couple of extra siege tank shots. One in the main. Could hold the ramp, but I think the natural is forfeit for Arcane Spoon. GG is going to be called Mudflap takes game number one for the formless bear slavs. In the bottom left, as the second platinum player for the Risen community, it's Salt. And in the top right, representing the formless bear slavs in his second ever tournament map, is Mudflap. Salt loves his Roach Ravager play toward the mid game. Constantly working on his macro, getting up to 3 4 bases. But ZVP has been the bane of his existence lately. Let's see how he fares. Mudflap going for a scout. Salt. With the hatch first. Gas. And sure to follow is a pool. Mudflap, though, doing something interesting already. You might have seen this pylon and building on the minimap and been like, of course he's opening forge, but no, it's a gateway on the high ground here on Eternal Empire. This is making me think uh, it, it could be a stalker build. Is he going to follow it up with a cyber core? Yeah, so gate cyber. Wait. No! No, don't do gate cyber nexus and wall off on the high ground! You mad lad. You absolute mad lad. Salt! Triple expands. Double expands. Whatever. This is eco cheese. Well, not quite. I mean, this could be um, an opener that you can use. I'm interested to see... If Salt has studied the probes and where he's going to pivot from here, I'm going to hold some game knowledge in order to create suspense. Now, just a very small comment. You'll notice there's three drones mining on a patch. You can actually optimize your mining uh, by pulling one of these off of the patch, finding the patch with only one worker, and uh, saturating from there. Now he's just oversaturated, so there's going to be three to multiple patches, but um, Salt maybe wanting to uh, rally those drones to his natural but uh, nonetheless the point stands at the start of the game three of your drones will go to a mineral patch you want to find that patch identify it and pull one drone over to the patch that has one drone which usually will be one of these two outlier patches which is unfortunate actually yeah you'll see that right here this patch has one mining this patch has one mining these two have three so just a little mining optimization thing uh, your third drone will mine at 33% efficiency. So, Mudflap going for an adept play. Salt sees that there's no wall off. And I really like the Ling Flood here. He's going to tackle the adept, at least get the shields off, and cause a couple taps of hall damage before the shade completes. But 
he should beeline these lanes across the map as soon as he's finished because queens will be more than enough to handle this adept. Oh no, the queen's out of position. The adept goes into the mineral line. Two drones will be lost before the adept dies. Unless the adept fights the queen, it fights the queen. So one drone is lost. Salt has link speed. He's going in. There's nothing to hold the wall. He is in the base of the Protoss. Mudflap does not have any units. Warpgate research is not complete. The pylon goes down on the low ground. Wait, Salt backs out. Why does Salt back out? Okay, he's going against the gateway, I guess. Mudflap calls GG. Salt evens the score one to one. Hold up. Was that an offensive GG from Mudflap? Oh no, man. Don't offensive GG when you're fighting with probes. Not like this. Not like this. Salt has this game one. Unreal. Well, now there's drama. Now Salt is, like, obligated to win. I think Salt's tilted 16 more Zerglings on the map, uh, but the worker... Well, the soup doesn't lie. It's 23 workers to 12. Even though Salt's spamming out Zerglings, I mean, he's on 3 hatch. As long as he spends his money, doesn't get too cocky, and doesn't throw away too many links into the wall, he's gonna be absolutely fine. And double Adept at the front, plus... A century means these guys shouldn't be able to break into the base, but it also means Mudflap should never be able to get a third. We're going to see Salt starting to drone hard. He's triple pumping queens as well, which makes me think that he thinks there may be a Stargate follow-up. Mudflap finally returning to pro production. Um, however, the Zerg is just going to outrace him here. The key thing here is we have two Platinum players, right? One of the banes of Platinum players is that they don't spend their money uh, and also pulling your lings out of the wall when the game's won. But, 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 if Salt spends his money, he will have a better army than Mudflap, straight up. He's just going to have more stuff, uh, and it's going to require, like, really incredible storms or really incredible colossi play something. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, so Salt tries to break in with Banelings. Great force field from Salt, or uh, excuse me, from Mudflap. Gonna prevent this Zealot from going down. He's going to go after the pylon. Oh, another couple of good force shields. Um, however, Mudflap not able to use this energy. A guardian shell, too. I I don't know if that was helpful. That might have been a panic guardian shell. Um, hallucinate, no hallucinated phoenix scout. Immortal coming out. <clears throat> you know, okay. So since Duddles is uh, typing here, I'll publicly state that if it's not offensive GG... I publicly apologize to Mudflap, but, you know, my read on it was that it was offensive GG. It's usually customary to um, leave the game after typing good game. However, I can see Duddle's point where he may not want to let his teammates down and saw a chance, so he's continuing the game forward. I don't want to cause any drama. Um, I respect both of our players today. Salt backing up. Although... Okay, so Salt has 500, 300 in the bank. That's not great. He's... He's morphing double lair. One of them has already completed. Maybe worried about DT play and sniping of a hatchery. I don't know. I... I... 
can't figure that out. It does add hit points to the building, um, so there can be logic to that, but the roach production has begun. Salt Bank, though, starting to stack up, and that's going to counterbalance his economic lead. Some of it. I mean, he's still very, very, very far ahead. Um, and that lead's only going to get farther as these mineral patches mine out. Mudflap should probably transfer some of these probes very soon to a third base, but he needs to take that third base. Without dropping the third base, this army is out in the open for no reason. Salt coming in on a massive attack. A lot of force seals are down, and there's nothing Salt can do about it because there's no Ravagers with this army. Still plenty of sentry energy. Mudflap going for a Dark Shrine, which could work out because there's no Overseers with the army, but Lynx have made it in the wall once again, getting 18 probe kills uh, as the main engagement was occurring. Salt gets into the main again. Probe after probe falls, 26, 27. Lings collapsing on one of the Zealots. Without a gateway here, these Zealots are warping in very slowly. Huge haul damage on the second Zealot. It falls as well. Mudflap pulls back to the main, kills off some more Zerglings. Assault getting his creep spread going, which for a plat player, pretty decent so far. Uh, he's got maybe a quarter of the map covered. One Painling in the mix. The Warp Prism spots to move in. Mudflap bravely fighting to the last here with some good force fields. He could actually get a decent amount of kills. The mortals are very strong, especially paired with the prism. I don't know if he has any warp prism micro potential. And of course, this DT would very slowly kill off this whole army since there's no overseer. Salt does have a net. He accidentally manually <laughs> detonates the. Wait. Yeah, I think he manually detonated it. Um, accident, but. Mudflap going on the attack. Overseer is with this army now. The DT falls. Oh no! Salt kills his own Ravager with Bile. Two sentries, two zealots in the prism. However, the prism's best utility would be microing back this immortal. Drop on the other side of the Roach Ravager. GG is called. In the bottom right corner of Death Aura. As the Blue Protoss, or the Formless Bear Slugs, it's Lunar Storm. In the top left, getting the first point on the board for the Risen Community, it's our Purple Zerg, Salt. So, Lunar Storm with a 100 MMR advantage, and this is his best matchup. I'd say he's the favored player here. Let's see if Salt can pull off a second win in a row. It's good to see both teams able to field plats. Uh, sometimes it's a struggle, and one team or the other has to give, or both, have to give walkovers. So it's really cool to see uh, four plats taking the field today. Or should I say future diamonds, hopefully. I can't call them Platinum Heroes because, you know, that's, uh, that's trademarked already, I think. Uh, Ooh, Salt gets the yeah. surround on the scouting crew. Hey, thanks for the fall in Mudflap. Salt, stacking three larva though. He's, uh... He's got to spend this. He did not go pool first. He's got to make drones. He's fallen behind. Oh, no. Oh, oh, he double expanded again. Okay, never mind. Now, Lunar Storm did have the uh, possible advantage of watching the last game. This is already a very solid opener. Gate, Cyber, Nexus on the low grounds. Although he has not started up a second gateway or a first unit is he gonna drop a tech building hmm could it be a twilight council maybe oh duddle's saying her 
Sorry, so sorry, Lunar. I'll uh, I'll gender you correctly. StarCraft Esports is so male-dominated. That's uh, you just kind of default to he a lot of the time, and it's it's good to see females joining the scene. Um, robotics facility first from Lunar Storm. Interesting, and a shield battery at the front. So, Salt, hopefully gonna be very economic about this. I don't... Did Lunar scout the third? No, Lunar has not scouted the third. I think Lunar really needs to send out an Adept for a scout as soon as possible, and maybe get a Stargate to punish this, but no, it's Robo into Twilight. Uh, probably a defensive play. He's gonna try and take a third. But pro production has been cut as well. That's um that's not good. You can't sit on 28 workers as a Protoss. You gotta keep those guys pumping out constantly. Salt doing a great job on his spending, getting out six more drones as we speak. Hmm. Charge on the way. Okay, charge. One of the rarer first texts you can see out of this Twilight Council. Uh, I feel like we almost never see it at a pro level. In 2020, Resonating Glaives has just been determined to be way stronger. Um, and then, you know, second most popular is DT opens, and then third would be Immortal Century, and then this takes a hard fourth. Well, there's Stargate played too, but I'm talking about as far as, like, Twilight Robo. Salt's getting up his Warren, double Evo Chamber. This is a later Warren timing, but he is not really taking any aggression from the Protoss just yet, so it's all going to work out well. Six Zerglings finally going on the map. Plus one melee, plus one ranged, and carapace. Now this is interesting. Um, you almost never see this on the Zerg perspective in the matchup. Usually you uh, just go for ranged or melee. Melee is the more popular upgrade currently. Given that uh, mid to late game ZVP is mostly Banelings on the Zerg side, backed up by Ravagers in most cases. Lunar Storm, I think, might be going for an attack, which is interesting to me. I would really expect an expansion um, based off of what we've seen, but this is going to be like a combined arms charge all in off of like two bases, I guess. There's four more. The question is, does Salt read this? Because this is a very like uh, out of meta build. And it's executed a bit strangely, not that that's a bad thing. Um, so, will Salt be prepared? Salt's gonna be supply blocked, which isn't great. He has a dozen roaches coming out. The upgrades are gonna hit mid-engagement. They are about 25 seconds away for melee and ranged. Um, 30 seconds away for carapace, I think. Oh no, they're all going to finish at exactly the same time, never mind. Never you mind. Yep, Lunar Storm preparing the attack. Salt getting six more roaches. Now normally you want three Ravagers to kind of flank and take out the Prism. Salt floating 1400 minerals, 500 gas, so he doesn't have anywhere near what he can. You really need to kite back from the roaches and get in a choke point. But Salt taking maximum damage from the charge lots. The Immortal going uncontested from behind. Queens are trying to focus the Prism. They get it, but not before another wave of charge lots hits. A dozen roaches on the production tab for Salt, but they're all going to be popping out at different locations. These guys might get a couple kills, but they are going to be gunned down by the two Immortals. Oh no, all these shots being wasted on Guardian Shell. Shield's gone off the Immortals. Queen's still holding the ramp. That's going to buy time for Salt to get out even more reinforcements. Lunar Storm's pretty all in here. He's trying to run reinforcements from the main, but these guys are going to hit as the Immortals are taking damage. 
The Immortals really need to retreat here. Guardian Shell's gonna save them for now. And they will survive to meet up with their charge lot brethren. Salt producing queens three at a time, but he really needs to keep spamming out these roaches. 800, 400 in the bank. And Lunar Storm really needs to attack. Another wave of charge lots running forward and a fresh prism. Yeah, so Zerg's in the chat. If you're ever engaging a charge lot all in, the best thing you can do is engage at the edge of creep like we see Salt doing, and then back up. Stutter step back and fire against the Zealots. Every shot. Back up. And it looks like we're actually seeing Salt begin to do. No, he's just disengaging. Never mind. Optical illusion. Um, and try to pull behind the mineral line so that the Zealots are only engaging your front couple roaches. Zealots are bleeding out. There's more coming in from the prism, though. Salt getting 10 more. The drones pulled into the fight. Burning shell off the immortals. They actually can't micro. The prism needs to come save these guys, or they will actually die to drones. Yep, the first immortal down. Uh, but you need to re A move the drones, or they'll stop attacking. It looks like they were right clicked, actually, not A move. So the immortals down, and all of a sudden, this attack is fended off by salt. Oh my god, Salt's held! Lunar Storm did a good job spending his money during that engagement, but 1,600 gas in the bank, no third and fourth gas, and he did not expand behind this. So it was a very all-in play. Uh, mineral patches gone out of the main. The ones in the natural are going to start expiring soon, and he needs to push out and take that third base, but now he doesn't have the tools to do so. Salt did not lose a drone, pretty much. He, he lost like three. Um... He needs to resaturate the gases, but other than that, he's kind of fine. He could take a fourth if he wants, getting a lair on the natural. Salt so could attack and overrun this, but uh, no scouting in position for a Zerg. So he's he's not going to leap off on the opportunity. Now there's an Immortal out, and with shield battery overcharge, I think this could be held. A lot of chrono boosts on these next Saya as well. Almost full energy for both of them. Finally, Lunar Storm taking a third and fourth gas. Salt finally getting some scouting done. A ton of Archons warping in off the Templar archives for Lunar Storm. Uh, I'd like to see, well, some Storm for her. Oh no. Yeah, you gotta kill off the gateway. These guys are massive units. They cannot fit through here. Or, no, you actually don't. You can elevator them out with the Prism too. But I think killing the um, gateway was the better option because Lunar needs to take the third. Finally sinking all that gas into seven Archons. Um, Salt does take a fourth. This is a very late fourth as the Zerg at this point in the game. You'd expect to see a 5th and a 6th. Um, however, we did see something interesting, was, which was the Protoss being held off and staying in the game. I mean, there was no reason for Lunar Storm to tap out given our current game state, but um, given that Salt didn't counterattack, but what you'd really like to see um, is the Zerg getting that Killer Instinct, being like, I know how much I've killed off, and I know the Protoss has nothing at this point. So, oh no, the move command, the F2, unbind F2, hashtag unbind F2 2020. No, no, the move command, not like this. So what happened there is Lunar Storm tried to move her army uh, with the all army selection hotkey, but some of the units were not prepared to micro back. So four Archons and half the charge lots died for free. GG is called Salt takes up.
in the bottom right corner of Submarine as our orange Zerg, it's Salt. And in the top left, as the purple Zerg, it's Remain. Now, I think it's really interesting of Remain to choose this map. Why? It's the most Zerg favored map in the pool. He's going to be going pool first. Um, Remain is the diamond player for the Formless Bear Slaws, so he is favored to win here. Salt on a two win streak for Risen, but uh, again, it's going to be a rough hold. You can already see he's going a pool first build. But it's just later than remains. These are kinks that need to be worked out. And they will with time and practice. But um, yeah, so interesting for Remain to pick this because he may have Terran and Protoss opponents in the future. And this map could definitely give him an edge over them. Whereas in ZvZ, not so much, right? They're both Zerg. You're both the same race. You're both playing with the same deck. So... Uh, this is a gasless opener, Remain, going to attack with six lings and expand behind it. Salt going to have a defensive six lings out, and these will be out in time for him to defend. It's going to come down to ling micro and scouting on how, scout, uh, how Salt reacts to this. Now, he hasn't seen the second Overlord, so he needs to be careful. Salt d is getting gas, so he's a lot more all-in than Remain. Remain's actually going to have to go on the defensive. But that's going to be pretty easy given that he already has uh, superior ling count and he, he's going to be able to just um, get more lings out at home to defend, spines if he needs them, etc. Okay, Remains winning in the ling micro. He's taken fewer losses than Salt by far. Salt should be going into Baneling Nest very shortly. He has the minerals, he has the gas, but in these intense high micro situations like we're about to see... Great minds think alike. Uh, I don't think Salt quite realizes they went different builds, but I think he's referring more to the fact that they both chose to pressure one another. Let's get to drop a creep tumor. Interesting. Um, still no Baneling Nest here from Salt. No Roach Warren either, which is another possible response if you think you're being attacked, albeit uh, less strong and less likely. Remain has map control. Salt, perhaps waiting for his link speed to kick in. There's our Baneling Nest. And we should see Zerglings begin to flood out as the larvae stack up. Hopefully. Remain droning hard. So the onus is on Salt to deal damage. You'll notice 20 workers to 14. Salt's got a ton of larva in the main. No, he's droning! No, he built drones! Oh my god. So, Remain has two advantages, right? We mentioned the worker lead. He also has superior larva production. For every one um, larva that pops out for salt, Remain's getting two, and he can translate those into units, and he has the money to do so thanks to that bigger economy. Salt Nat is way too late. Um, we noted this before, the killer instinct. Knowing when your opponent is behind you in the power curve and being prepared to strike. Salt not quite prepared to strike. I mean, this is some damage, but it's not going to make up for the huge golf in economy and the huge golf in larva production. Remain appears to be just going for a roach play. Uh, it's too late for Salt to attack now. He is moving kind of out on the map, but... He can't break this wall. You need at least plus one melee. And a lot more Zerglings, of course. 900 minerals, 400 gas in the bank here for our Risen Zerg. And this is just, I mean, like, Remain's going to make... Oh, nope, he's going for Lair, so the game will continue forward. But Salt needs to take a third. He needs to keep producing Queens, getting tech, injecting, spending Larva... He's got some Banelings. He could get a good connection here if these aren't hold position. Well, okay. Yeah, they run away. That's fine. It's the kill. They do blow up a Creep Tumor, which is nice, I guess, but...
music being wildly inappropriate. There's nothing happening. You can tone it down or orchestra, orchestra. No, no, you're playing the wrong piece. We need like chill out Terran music. Everyone's just chilling. There's no action for the camera to follow uh, right now. Salt takes the third finally. So much money in the bank here. He is supply blocked. He's going to clear that with triple overlord remain. Thinks he's defending. I I mean, he can attack whenever he wants. He has the slur. He's going to use it for roach speed. Salt finally getting out five more drones, but he's still down a dozen workers. Uh, remain interested. He's not poking out to take a third. I mean, he totally could. Plus one is about to hit. Roach speed is about to hit. And we're going to see more and more roaches hit the field. Remain finally moving out. Salt doesn't have anything to defend this. He could have a ton of defensive roaches, but the Warren only halfway complete. Remain isn't moving out still. He's just sitting there. He did skip Ling Speed too, which is interesting. Salt spends like 700 minerals on Overlords. He needs spines. Oh, he builds 10 more Lings. The Roach Warren pops and he builds 10 more Lings. Well, the Queens are gonna fall and it looks like Remain is going to even up our score two to two. GG. On the right side of the Golden Wall, as the Teal Terran, the Risen Community, its savior. And on the left side, as the Purple Zerg, for the Formless Bear Slots, its remain. Score is 2-2, two to two. Salt. Winning two games in a row before falling to the diamond slot of the formless bear slots. Savior sends out an SCV scout. Main rallying one overlord to Hirish. Actually, this is a weird overlord rally. He's gonna pull one of them back. What? I don't actually understand this maneuver. Is he worried about a proxy rocks? I mean, your standard hatch gas pull out of the Zerg. Um, so, Golden Wall can breed interesting results in ZVT. I know there's a tank build a lot of Risen Terrans like, where uh, you, you go bio tank. Matter of fact, there's the factory. Um, you drop right around here and you pressure your opponent. Uh, they're playing Zerg. Can work versus Protoss too, or Terran. Actually, it works to resolve three races, come to think of it. Might have been a simpler way to say that. Kaboom. Savior with some dank Reaper Micro, able to get a drone kill and uh, force Remain to take a third timing. He might not want to. So. He's going to have to escort a drone out with the queen. We're going to force it back for kicks and giggles. But yeah, uh, if you're ever in this situation as a Zerg, just make her a, a gas and wait for your queen to push out. 
you'll be able to save that drone. Starport follow-up from Savior. He's going to go into some Hellion pressure. Um, Zerg on this map can go for Nidus play. You can go for two base layer things like that. There's only one scouting angle for the Terran. You can only get into the base this way. You can't get in this way. You can't get in this way. And that makes it easy to limit the Terran scouting. And uh, you can get away with some trickery, but it looks like Remain wants to play a standard macro game. Uh, neither player taking the gold base just yet. There's a lot of weird play you can do based around that as well. You can take the back of the gold base, which of course means you don't have this gas, but it's only one gas anyway. Um, and you can mine perhaps more safely. If we get into a macro game, sometimes what we'll see happen is the Zerg will take the top half of the map while the Terran mass expands to the bottom half. But this is all speculation. It looks like we're, uh, neither player are locked into a certain build yet. Savior does not appear to be going for that tank build we talked about. Instead, some Liberator harass to get his damage done. Maybe going to distract at the front with these Hellions. These Hellions have been playing very conservative, uh, not pushing back the creep or anything, not trying to slide into that third base. And they're still not moving out, even though the Liberator is almost to the main. There we go. So, two drones, the queen, and two larvae picked off. Will oh my god, that's totally in the circle. Okay, third larva goes down, nonetheless. Uh, Lings are going to zone out the Hellions. They will all die, but, I mean, while it's not optimal you lose all those Zerglings, like, you can. I, I think the better play is to pull the Zerglings back behind the queens. The queens can fire on the Hellions, um, and then you can... Well, you don't have to do anything, really. You can pull the Zerglings, like, back here or use them as a drag net to catch the Hellions if they get too ambitious. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see Remain trying to push the creep out here as well, so that Savior can't just push in with Bio. And uh, snipe down the third. I think he wants to take this as his fourth location. He clipped something over here. Why aren't there- oh, he pulled them away from the Liberator and then, uh, never brought them back. Yeah, yeah, he pulled them all to the third, which is fine, I guess. Some delayed mining time. Savior mining out the back wall, and we're going to see- it's exactly as I have foreseen. Savior's gonna take the back bases. Remain is likely to take, uh, either this or this fourth. Yeah, he's gonna take the gold as a fourth. Hellions go into the mineral line. There was no time for Remain to act because he did not have an Overlord purged here and did not have creep threat. So uh, the Queens are coming up from behind, but 18 drones are lost and one of the Hellions survives. Combat shields almost finished for Savior. Plus one attack on the way, two thirds done. Final Hellion gets cleaned up by Ling's off screen as we follow this drop in. Uh, Bane Link speed not even halfway done for the Zerg. Carapace is about to finish. Plus two melee halfway done but not going to be a factor in this fight. Here we go. So Savior eventually transitioning into the tank drop build I talked about, only bringing one tank with him though. Uh, usually we see two or three. And he's going to get the spawning pool thanks to the positioning here. That means no more Zerglings can be produced for Remain. Valer down to half health. 
does have his last clutch of links popping and the pain links are on the field but they were quite far away so queen gets gunned down all the wings die one bane link connects cleans up three marines but there's still plenty left oh no the bane links get faded into the take fire i mean savior loses a lot of marines but he's trading out low health marines for bane links that's greater cost to the zerg Wait, Remain hasn't remade the spawning pool! Remake the spawning pool! Oh no, he has plus two melee for no Zerglings. Savior needs to continue the assault here. He's at such an advantage. He's taking a fourth base, I guess, but... Uh, I mean... You can siege the gold. You can do whatever you want. Remain doesn't have units. He has like seven Hydra and a Dream. He has two Hydra. He has two Hydra, one Zergling, one Baneling. Like, the Terran can run roughshod. You can push the creep back. Remain taking a fifth base, though. And again, this is a bold play. Save, you're sending a medevac up north. This scouting Zergling did see it. I really like to see that Remain does have one of his two Zerglings out on the map. Um, that's usually a uh, play you see reserved for high diamonds or masters players splitting off individual lanes for scouting um but you know he does he know about this back third yeah he does know about the third and fourth he has an overlord perched over there but okay this morphing hive has very low health it gets picked off remain coming in with the hydras and they are going to lose this engagement. 26 more Zerglings on the way. The Marines extend past the tank line. The Hydras uh, will win the fight against the Marines if they don't retreat to the tank line. The Savior does. Hydra Dens slowly losing health. I mean, it will take a very long time to clean up. Lings are going to finally overrun this as Hydra pick off uh, the final Marines and the tanks go down, but Savior more than paid for those losses. Now, Remains Mining shouldn't be hurt too much as long as he transfers these drones instead of long distancing uh, up here to the north base. Savior moves out of fourth. A Ling run by might be able to get quite a few SCV kills. He's in on the SCV line. The SCVs need to just turn and fight. Two Marines not going to be enough to clean this up without help from the SCVs. Three, four, five. Half dozen SCVs go down. Remain way ahead in economy at this point, but that might change as this Marine drop goes down. There's too many Banelings. Savior's attention was elsewhere, so the drop gets cleaned up. Savior dropping scans. Uh, oh no, he scans out of range of the tank. There we go. That was actually really expensive. That's a lot of dead mules. Here comes the Wingbane Hydra. Savior backs up to the tanks. But his army's getting overrun. He needs to rally a defense quickly, or the Zergling, or the Zerg's gonna keep pressing in here. Yeah, Bane links to the front. They're just gonna roll right in this wall the supply depot's down as well and supply has been dropped on two of these depots oh no they're gonna roll right past and get into the scv line actually savior doing his best to split as quickly as he can but 10 scvs in total go down remaining two banelings just softening up some workers remain chooses to not attack but savior took some damage nonetheless i think had uh remain continued pushing in right there it would have simply ended the game. Rain going in on this undefended planetary, maybe? No, he's going to go for the third. There's a supply depot wall up, but Savior's army kind of in tatters. 24 marines, and that's it. Plus two weapons, plus two armor. Going to finish up for the Terran shortly, but it's still about 20 seconds away. One third of the existing medevacs goes down. Pi Depot Wall is going to get Bane busted. Savior's stimming in to respond. He needs to split. These are great Baneling connections. And it looks like Remain is going to be putting a third point on the board for the formless spare slots.
Xavier's fighting for dear life, but Zerg's about to get in on the production. GG is called. In the bottom left, give it up for the Knight of Ire, Warrior of the Neverforge, the Teal Toss, Kugel as Risen's Acer in the top right, pulling off a win against Risen's D2. It's the D2 for the Formless Bear Slots. Give it up for Remain. Remain with two wins on the board so far. Gate first on the low ground. Hatch first to remain. Gentleman's game. Now, there's only one map remaining after this, meaning if Kugel is able to get a win here, we will move on to Everdream. If Remain takes the win, then the Formless Bear Slots claim the series in 4-2 fashion. Google gets a full scout. Gate Nexus Cyber. Very standard play. Google pulls back the scouting probe. Oh my god! We saw this earlier! This is an early third from Remain. This is a very early third. It's going to leave him vulnerable to adept play. Uh, luckily, oh no, Kugel was shift click to scout it, but instead going up. Uh, no, 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 it looks like he clicked out again. Yeah, he scouts the early third. So he can punish this with adepts uh, if he knows the response. Because Remain is delaying a queen to get his third out this fast. Also delaying a couple drones. Uh, we saw Salt do this play earlier in the series. So it's cool to see it coming back from the D2 player. Kugel's going to open Stargate. This is another way you can punish it. Um, again, your opponent going to be behind in Queens. So Oracles can be very, very strong. And Remain is actually delaying this queen even farther to get even more drones out, getting out four lings, I guess, to uh, mitigate his chances of dying to double adept pressure, but it's going to be two adepts and an oracle for certain. This is like 100% oracle first. Will remain scout the stargate. He will. He even sees the oracle uh, whenever stargate's building something. You can see the little impression in the center of the circle. Little character model. Lings kind of slow to react to the shade, but they're on time-ish. Google just checking saturation on the gnat, and he saw the roach horn. Main is getting a safety spore in the main. Not so in the natural. Now, the reason you see pro game... Ooh. Links get the kill on the Adept as Link Speed finishes. But the, the reason you see pros forego the Spore in the Nat is because you pull two Queens here. Remain has not pulled two Queens to the Natural. Now, the Spore should get a couple shots off on the Oracle. Two, three, um, five shots actually before the Oracle spends any energy. Slight amounts of haul damage. And... Kugel not taking advantage of the weakness of this play, which is, yeah, sure, you ambush the Oracle and you catch it by surprise because you're not supposed to build it here, but it leaves half your mineral line defenseless. Kugel's going to go in at the third. Only one drone there. Uh, he cleans up a creep tumor, but still going to be a bridge between the Nat and the third. So Kugel's play kind of not taken off here. He's finally getting a second Oracle in the Stargate. Um, 
deploying Twilight Council behind this. Hi, Ren, showing my FXB fans love response incoming in two minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think that was slightly off center, so Google cancel remakes. Phoenix killing off an overlord remain going for a roach timing to try and shut down this third uh, Kugel actually doesn't have anything to respond to this so he will lose the third two oracles gonna try to get damage done at the third of the zerg but this is a really weird timing 36 workers I can't say that I've ever seen it uh, usually you want like 43 to 53 Oh, he's not bothering with the third. He's actually going for the kill. GG is going to be called Remain. Taking the win. 4-2 to two for the Formless Bear slots. GG. Well played to our opponents. Uh, congrats to the enemy captain, Duddles. Good to see you again, man. And um, yeah, that's going to be it for week four of the Validity Team League. We'll be back next weekend with week five. I hope you guys have a lovely afternoon. Uh, I'm going to raid you into someone wholesome, and we'll be back with some vermin tide in a few minutes. GG's! Born from the ashes 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 Born from the ashes